Hi guys, I'm back out detecting today and hopefully I'm going to avoid that rain. Um, the main purpose of this video today was I'm getting a lot of messages and emails asking, you know, how, how do you get your permission and how do you go about getting your permission? This so the, the first part of this video will be just basically guiding you guys, especially the beginners, or mainly just the beginners, you know, how, how to get their permission, guiding them um, through the best ways of doing that. So yeah, I hope you enjoy. After that, I'm going to be jumping on this field, a bit of stubble, and I'll show you what I can get. This field's relatively new to me as it is as well, so I'll, uh, I'll be on there. See you soon. Uh, but like I said, I'd like to take this opportunity just to uh, briefly go over getting getting some good permission and getting your first permission and give you some tips and advice because I'm getting a lot of emails um, from the YouTube followers and subscribers about how to do this. So for me, well, like, forget about me. Let's let's ask Richard because uh, he's here with us. So yeah, um, I know for a lot of people, it ain't the easiest of things to do. Um, a lot of people are nervous about approaching a landowner for the first time. Um, wasn't wasn't so bad because I got introduced via a friend. I asked a friend who knew a farmer, so it was quite easy. But from there, moving on, um, that led me into having the confidence to approach other farmers. And I think the best thing you've got to be is just be yourself. Don't, no airs and graces. Uh, just be polite, courteous, and if if you know is no, accept it. And you know, don't argue with that fact. You're not going to change their mind. Um, I have one permission that it's it's been a no, but I go every year. Uh, very politely and ask and see if things have changed and um, it's only no because somebody else has detected on it for years but you know things change so don't don't just be disheartened if somebody says no you can't go on it you know just respect that and maybe approach them again in a year's time or something but it will happen just be polite be yourself um, and, and be prepared to be honest I think transparency people can can read through people if they've been um, false and, and you know, have an ulterior motive, you know, going to take everything out of the land and never show you. Be willing, want to show them. There are farmers that want to see your finds. There are farmers that don't want to see you, that don't really care unless it's something really, uh, you know, worth something. But, um, yeah, yeah, that's all I can say. So, I mean, for me, I, I started de detecting after I got my permission anyway. So, I already had permission from shooting. I do a lot of um, shooting for the farmers. I get rid of, you know, the pests that he has in his, in his farm. So, I've got the rabbits and the pigeons and this, that and the other. Um, so, so yeah, I already had my permission, but I still had to get it. And for me, I was in the mindset of um, it's just a numbers game. So the more the more people you ask, you know, the more chance you've got of getting a yes. But like Richard said, you know, be yourself, be polite, and and accept the no's, but but relishing the yeses. But the no's, like Richard said, the, the no's are not always a no. You if when they've said no, just have a chat with them then about the stuff that you've been finding. Um, the you know the the passion. Let them see your passion and and. Sometimes that no then changes to well, I've got this little field that you can go on, or let's just put you on here and we'll see how it goes. And and that's that's precisely what we're going to be doing this morning. So we've got twenty. This is how you get permission, guys. Get it? We'll see you on the next field. Just arrived here now. And uh, look how beautiful it is. The rain's passed, so looks like there's a bit more rain coming in, but we'll see what we can do here today. Yep, see you on the first hole. This one looks like a little bronze forged nail. So like, yeah, I get these quite a lot, as you, as you might have seen in some of my videos. And this is, uh, and I mean, yeah, so this is a uh, hand forged nail, I think they call them. So it'll be uh, really old with that. Bit boring, but I quite like finding them. So we'll move on. Try and find some help. Just turning this next one off, it looks like a little dress weight. Yeah, it's a dress weight. Or a hem weight. If anyone doesn't know what a dress weight or a hem weight is, 
as I've sort of explained lots of times before, these were sewed onto women's dresses to keep keep them down from the wind, I believe, something like that. So yeah, just a dress weight. We. Just got to my first coin, and uh, the tone ID on the on the Noxy was the tw was just twenty two. So yeah, first coin for today, and I think it's a George Georgian coin by the looks of things. Let's have a look. Yeah, George Fifth. There's George, and there's Britannia. So we'll move on to the next hall. Good start. This next one I just found, you can see how small it is, and when it was in the mud I thought, oh yes, a Roman coin, but it's not, it's just a bun, a little military bun, there he is, tiny little thing, but we'll keep going, hopefully we'll find some Roman today, moving on. And it looks like another button. I've got a pocket full of buttons, but these ones I like. I like to show you all because sometimes you get quite a nice little pattern on there. You see the two lions or and a shield. Is it is it two lions or two horses? No, it's not two horses. Anyway, there's a. Uh, I'll clean it up anyway. There's a bit of pattern on there. Just another military button, but that's a bigger one. So as you all know, metal detecting, when you go out metal detecting, obviously you find loads of loads of rubbish and loads of the odd buttons and stuff like that. Um, I found a lot of buttons this morning, but and I didn't expect this one to be a button, because uh, I kind of know which numbers come up where, and this one excited me. I thought, oh yeah, I'm onto a coin here. But this is a button, but I believe it could be silver, so I'm going to clean that up, and I'm, I think that's probably going to be a silver my first silver button, uh, but I'll do the test on it and I'll I'll let you know at the end. Yeah, hey, I think that's a silver button, guys. Better than finding a normal button, but yep. So yeah, off we go. I'll probably need a bit of help on this one guys, so anyone who knows what that is, leave me a comment. Looks quite old. I'll clean it up anyway and I'll get you some pictures and uh, yeah, like I say, if you can help us with that one, give us a shout as you always do on the comments. Right guys, this next one was the scratchiest of signals, up and down on the numbers and not quite really crisp in your ear, it was one of them that sometimes you might ignore and sometimes you might even miss, So, but I think I've got the hammered cut quarter here, now I've only found a couple of these before, not with this machine, so it's the first cut quarter with the Equinox 800, I believe, I think it is. So, I'm not going to make an idiot of myself and try and tell you which one it is yet, because... Oh, where's it gone? I think there it is. Um, but what I will do is... Well, there'll be people there now saying, I know what that is. But fortunately I don't, so I'm going to... Is it a cut quarter? Is it just broke? No, it's a cut quarter. Yeah, it's a hammer cut quarter. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have a look at that. Clean that up. Look at my fingers. Clean that up. There's that side, and there's that side, and I'll uh, I'll get back to you. Well, that's made my day already. Hey, silver. Just 
touching up on the permission side of things again. Um, so hopefully by now you've already got your permission. So we're, we're talking in, in terms of you've been out, you've got your permission. What do we do next? Right. So you need to look after that permission. That's what I do. You, you've got to be respectful of the land. Don't leave any litter. Uh, fill all your holes in. Um, and just, just treat it as if, you know, it's your own sort of thing. Yeah, quite often what you might find is that once you've got some permission, um, you soon get more. Uh, it's happened to me a few times, but you've got to talk to people. Um, if people approach you on, on the field, generally they're the types of people that are interested in what you're doing. So show them what you've found and, you know, get talking, have a couple of minutes conversation with them and see what that brings. I mean, before I've, I've been speaking to people in a similar situation and I've walked away with new permission um, just, just because I've spoken to them. I took the time and they've understood what it's all about. Just so, so yeah, don't get disheartened by the nose, but talk to people that are interested. Um, yeah, the farmers talk as well, don't forget that. So once you've got to know one farmer, he'll always know another farmer that he's friends with. I've got one farmer that's that's managed to secure me some, some real good land. Uh, so I owe a lot of that to, to him. But if it wasn't for me asking him initially, he would have never known who I was. So he wouldn't have been able to ask anyone for me. So, so yeah, it's all about just asking. and But you've got to get out there and ask. And it's as simple as that. So it, you've already done your research. Once you've done your research, you, you know where you want to look. It's just a matter of knocking on that door. So go knock on that door and ask what's the worst can happen. Worst, yeah, worst can happen is they'll say no. So, and if they say no, have a five minutes conversation with them. Just just speak to them. Um, and you know, I've done that before and walked away with a, a little bit of permission, even though they said no initially, they've just changed their mind on the spot because they've got to know you. So yeah, don't, don't be put off by the no's, just, just be yourself. and. With, with regards to appearance, I don't think it really matters. Just don't go looking scruffy. Um, just go looking presentable. You don't have to be putting a suit and tie on all that. So. But yeah, just, I mean, I've had my permission now for a good three or four years. So yeah, no, and the, main, the key thing is just to, to look after it when you get it and, and be respectful of the land and don't just bring loads of people on or dump loads of, you know, rubbish everywhere or just take your rubbish away and fill your holes in uh, and you'll get there so yeah we'll see you on the next one right guys i've just got to this next signal and i think it's a coin because you know you get that feel for the tone and in, in your ear and that and the, the ids on screen so it's in this clump or that clump this clump it's in one of them clumps anyway so i just thought we'd take this little moment to uh, reveal it together So as you can see, you can just see the edge of it there, look guys. Um, so let's have a look, see what we've got. And it looks like another George Benny. Let's have a look. There's Britannia there. There'll be a date down there somewhere. I'm just making it worse. Uh, anyway, that's Britannia. And let's follow up this side. Just one second. Yeah, there we have it. George the Sixth, and it says 1946 on the back. So there we go, another coin. Getting to know the machine now, so I'm enjoying it. Really enjoying the knocks. Way. We've got a Doobry whatnot here. I'm on a field where I've found um, quite a lot of. Well, a fair few pieces of old brooches, Roman brooches, but I'm not saying this is one, but I won't disregard it either. Um, it looks quite old. I don't know what that is. Uh, so anyone who knows, give us a shout out. I'll put a picture up. I put a picture up like I always do, so yeah. But no, I'm, I don't think it's anything. It does look like it's got some age to it. Yeah. Another 
military button, guys. I'm onto another coin, and if I had to guess, that'd be an half penny just there. So, yeah, off we go. It's a Queen Victoria, half penny. There's Britannia on the back, as usual. Uh, I can't see a date of the second of this minute, so hang on a minute. 1888. There you go, guys. 1888. Victoria Halfpenny. Wait. Right guys, not bad for a couple of hours. I didn't expect to find some of the bits I actually did, so let's do a little round up here. So what we've got, we've got um, the few buttons that kept coming up. Unfortunately on this field I do get a lot of buttons, but you know, some are nice, so there's some there for you to look at. I'll get out the, the sun there so you can see. There, there's a few buttons. We've got the Victoria Half Penny 1888, you can see on there. And we've got the 1946, I believe that's a half penny as well. That's a George VI, George V, an unknown. I'd like to know what that is. It looks older than what I first thought. So anyone who's got an, an idea on that, just leave a comment down below. Uh, the handmade nails, as you all know, I love finding those. My first silver button, I believe. Not done a test on it yet, but I will do one tonight. So I'll get back to you on that. Bit of horse brass. The odd uh, dress weight. That rang up really well, but it would do because it looks like a ring. Um, what we got there, I don't know, part of a brooch I'm hoping, but I'm going to have a look into that. Star of the show for me today is the Silver Hammered, and I've, I think I can see that that now is an Elizabeth I cut quarter, so within the last two weeks I've had two pieces of silver, both being Elizabeth I. So apart from that guys, I'll see you on the next one, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>